Okay, so I just bought a used camera from B&H and I'm really nervous, but yeah, I'm really excited. So let's get into the video. And welcome back. My name is Daniel Morris. Today we are unboxing this new Sony a7 III from B&H. We're just gonna see what it looks like, see what condition it is in and test it out. And also afterwards, I'm gonna do some slow motion test and some 4K test and also some gimbal test and just some different things to see how it works. And yeah, so let's get unboxing. So um, this camera I got used from B&H. Um, this is around like $2,000 brand new, just the camera when it first came out. And um, right now they're going for around $1,600 brand new. And um, I picked this whole thing up. I got the lens and the camera for $1,500. I mean, that's how much it was listed for, $1,700 with tax and stuff. But anyways, this is, my video on me unboxing it. So start unboxing it, get rid of those. And here is the camera and the lens. And here's some more papers and just stuff like that. Um, oh, a receipt. And anyways, we'll get rid of the box. So here we have the camera and I um, got the 28 to 70 millimeter lens with it, the kit lens, and they are both used, I believe. And go ahead and open up. So first off, this strap is just like right there and here's of course all the manuals probably we'll look through them the other another day and here we go this looks about like the same that was on all the un other unboxing videos here is a usb cable a battery uh looks like an actual sony battery so hopefully that is and that's good if it is then here is a charging block and that's a sony brand too and here is the camera body itself if I can get it out. Come on, come out. Okay, so here it is. I'm not gonna open it. I gotta wait. And here is the kit lens. So here it is. Let me just see if there's anything else. No, I think that's all. So let's start unboxing and looking at it. So this is actually my first time to ever look at it. Um, I've never seen the Sony a7 III before. And this is a 28 to 70 millimeter kit lens, the F3.5 to something like that. And here is the actual camera body. So, feels nice and this thing was open. Um, feels nice and solid like always and yeah, looks like a Sony. Looks pretty nice. So far I don't see any scratches or anything. I am looking for scratches and dings and the screen looks great. Look at the sensor here. So the sensor looks great. Don't see any scratches on the sensor. And uh, how do you open the screen? Here we go. So this is one of those screens where they only flip out this much right here. And that's about all. Yeah, it looks good. I'm gonna go throw ahead and throw ahead. No. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this lens on and double check the lens. Yep, I don't see any scratches on there. Just like I said, dust on top of the everything. Not super bad, but anyways, go ahead. I am very um, like nervous about putting lenses on because I hate getting dust inside the sensor. But anyways, I'm just slide it on just like that and click. Then we will go ahead and throw in the battery. I guess we should start finishing opening everything so now I will go ahead and pop open and put in this battery right here hopefully it's charged if not I'll have to charge it and latch that shut and yeah I'll go ahead and power it on if I can find the oh there it is <laughs> so I'm gonna press English enter date and time select my time zone uh, let's see And then it shows a little Play Memories app and I already got a uh, app on my phone for that and let's do that. And here's my first test. So, looks good. Everything looks fine. It is definitely a pretty wide angle because it's a full frame camera. So, yeah. I'm just gonna basically look through all the settings and see what it has and then I'll join you back in the video. 
Okay, so I looked through the menu, looked at the settings, adjusted a few things, and I actually found it surprisingly pretty easy to navigate through the menu. Um, I always heard that Sony has a really complicated menu, and it is kind of complicated, but um, it was actually, I thought, pretty easy to navigate through, and the settings were pretty um, made sense and whatnot. I'm going to go ahead and throw in an SD card. Um, I'm going to figure out how to open an SD card slot, so... There we go. And go ahead and throw in an SD card. So this is an Extreme Pro um, SD card. And hopefully it'll work. Um, I'm going to slide it into the just this one slot. This thing has two slots, I think. Yeah, it has two slots. And um, I'm going to first just throw in one SD card and see how it works. Oh. I forgot, it says no memory card inserted in slot one. So now I put an SD card into slot one and I'm gonna go take my first picture with the Sony a7 III. Okay, so I'll go ahead and see how it looks. Not bad. I am going to zoom in and it looks really clearly. The detail is crazy. And for some reason, the, the touch screen actually works like this, but then when you go to this mode, it works to focus and stuff, but then in the menu, it doesn't seem to work, so that's kind of interesting. So that was my first picture, and it looks good. Now I'm going to take my first video, and let's see. So I'm recording right now in 4K uh, 25, no, 4K 24, this is what it looks like. I have no idea if image stabilization is on. Hopefully it is, and this is kind of my setup. Um, yeah, I actually got a new studio tour. I mean, I meant to say I got a new studio. I kind of just built it, and I'm using a tool chest. And yeah, the maybe a little dark because I didn't set the settings on lighting anyways. This how it looks. Makes a little noise and I'm gonna watch the video. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the settings on my shutter speed. So I am at 4, 24 frames per second. So I'm gonna do a 1 50th of a shutter speed and the aperture is going to be, uh, how do you adjust the aperture? Let's see. Um, I can't figure out how to adjust the um, aperture. Kind of silly, I can't even adjust the aperture. Come on, where is the aperture dial? Oh, huh, I found it. It was right here. Here's the aperture button right down here. So now I'm at aperture 3.5 and shutter speed of 1 50th. Okay, so I'm recording in 4K 24 at 50 FPS and an aperture of f3.5 with an ISO, and the ISO is on auto, so I have no idea what it's on. And yeah, this is what it looks like. And my inbuilt stabilization is on, and so yeah, this is what it looks like. Um, afterwards, I kinda wanna do some low noise test and see what it looks like. You can see through the viewfinder while you're recording, which is pretty cool. And yeah, um, I'm gonna do some autofocus test. Uh, zoom in, focus. It's kind of hard to tell if I'm in focus. Looks looks like I'm in focus. Uh, maybe I'm a little too close. Looks fine to me. So, I think it looks great. So now I am going to do some continuous photos, just see how fast it is. That's fast. Um, I'm gonna look at the viewfinder, um, let's see. That's like really fast. Anyways, my other one was like, my Canon SL2 is like six frames per second. I believe, I mean six pictures per second. I believe this one's 10, so. 
you can see, it's having, it's keeping up so far. Uh, when I zoom in and out, it slows down a little bit, but I just took like 50, no, how many pictures did I take? I took a lot. Anyways, I'm like really impressed with this camera. It's so far working pretty good. Um, I haven't found any flaws with it, like besides a few negative things that I do not like, which is the it's no, not touch screen in like the menu and stuff, which I have a Canon SL2, it's, which is a pretty cheap camera and it's touch screen and has a flip out screen. And it's kind of weird that they didn't put a touch screen or flip out screen in a $2,000 camera. I don't know why, um, at least they put it in the new Sony A7S III um, at the time of this video. That's about what I don't like about it. And the battery life is like really good. I heard it's like you can take 700 something shots. Some people say more. Um, so far it's right here. It's like 70 something, 70 something percent, 67 right now. Some people say these are a little loosey and kind of get in the way. Um, I'll have to ch try that out for myself. I'm gonna get, try out the headphone jack, see how that sounds. And I'm gonna go try that out real quick. So now I'm going to test out the headphone jack. I believe it's right here. And I'm gonna plug it in. And. Okay, so I am recording and this is what it looks like to the headphone jack. It actually sounds pretty good. Um, I believe this is the mic right here and, and right there. So um, actually I think it sounds super good through these headphones. I hear a lot of noise like a lot of noise and a dove cooing in the background. But um, anyways, you can hear a little rattling from these things right here. Um, hopefully that won't be a problem, but I think you can adjust the volume on the headphones and yeah. So I'm just gonna basically go through some settings and showing you a few features. So of course, here is the um, mic input and I have not tried that out yet. And some people say they go bad after a while and here is the headphone jack which I just tried out and the HDMI port and a type C port which I believe is for charging and then a multi port whatever it's called and then of course the dual SD card slots um, a little wheel right here another wheel right here and a wheel right here and some customization buttons right here and I believe you can customize like a bunch of them and then of course a little um, hot shoe jack right there and then as for the settings I believe it shoots 4k 24 and 30 frames per second and 1080 at 120 um, 240 and then also 60 and all your other formats um, and I believe the picture quality is 24.2 megapixels the actual megapixels is like 25 point something but they just say the effective is 24 point too. I'm pretty sure the video quality is like 8-bit um, So everything looks normal on here. I got a few accessories So I got this little Sony power block thing and a little USB cord This looks like a mini um, USB and I'm pretty sure it's a type C But of course I have thousands of type C cables, so that's I don't really care and then the lens cap and the camera cap and then this little lens cap right there which is so tiny and then of course a little lens hood which I may use and then um, the strap of course which I never use a strap um, I got a few more accessories so right here is a Tiffin filter um, go ahead and open it up wow it's tiny so this is a little filter I just got um, I believe it will just screw on like so. Yikes, it needs cleaning. So I just cleaned it and screws on just like this. This is just a UV filter um, and that fits on and this should still fit on here, yep. So I just basically keep the little UV filter on to keep it from getting scratched and um, just stuff like that. And then I also got a little screen protector and I will throw that on later. And I bought this um, lens cap for my other camera. Um, my other camera has had a 
55 eight millimeter diameter on the lens and I accidentally got a 55 so it fits perfectly on this lens. So if I lose this one, I should be good to go. And I also got a variable ND filter for my Canon um, 18 to um, 135 millimeter lens. And it, had a, it has a 67 millimeter diameter. So I got a step um, up ring from 67 to 77. So this is a 77 millimeter and I have, I just ordered today a step up ring for 55 to 77 millimeter. So I can use this filter on this lens. It's a variable ND filter and it works really good. It's just a K and F concept. And um, I also got this macro reverse ring for my other camera and just basically inverts the lens and you can take super close macro photos and I love this thing. Um, I'm just showing you a few accessories that I actually got for my camera and a few other ones. So these are some small rig little things. I love these things. Um, I'm using them right now for my boom pole and other things. And just little things like this are so handy. And I also have two SD cards and I'm gonna pop out this SD card, which is like Extreme Pro, Sandus Extreme Pro. And I'm gonna stick this Sandus Extreme in and see if it'll record in 4K. So it does record in 1080p on the Sandus Ultra SD card. But it also, but it doesn't record in 4K. It only records in 4K on the Extreme Pro in the Extreme. So um, that's just one thing I'll let you know. Oh, and one other thing, I'm pretty sure you can put two SD cards in and record at the same time and take pictures to both SD cards. So that way, if one SD card goes bad, you still have a backup with another one. So that may be one lifesaver for you. So okay, so now I'm gonna get my gimbal. This is a Moza Air gimbal. And I'm gonna go and try to put this camera on there and see if it'll actually fit. I'm gonna take off this little cap right here. Anyways, um, I will mount this thing to the camera. So I got that screwed on here and I will mount it on just like uh, so. It's kinda a little, maybe a little off. So it was actually really easy to balance, surprisingly and it fits on there just perfect with no issues. And I went and powered it on and looks fine, looks great. Everything works. You can go completely straight down without it touching and do a full rotation. And it barely just touches on 28 millimeters. So I guess you can't quite do a full 360, but works good. And I'm gonna hit record. So now I am recording in 4K24 on this camera and it looks pretty good. Um, I'm gonna have to do some more field test outside just to see how it looks and yeah. So now that we have looked through a few features, um, everything looks great and so far there's no any like imperfections. Um, I This camera was in condition nine, so that means that there was like a, maybe a few scratches and stuff but honestly, I don't. I could not find a single scratch on this camera, and everything looks like brand new, um, except for the like little dust and the very nooks and crannies. Uh, but other than that, everything looks great. So um, what I'll do now is go show you some test footage of me recording in 4K and slow motion, and then gimbal shots, and hopefully that all looks good. So have fun. Okay, well here I am. Um, so what I'm going to do first is just do some. 4K test footage, and um, what we'll do is just go walk up and down this bridge and hopefully get some good shots. It's golden hour right now, so the sun's setting and it should be just right. There's a bridge uh, highway right here, so it's really noisy. And I have a little GoPro right here, so I'm gonna go and get some good test footage, so let's go. Okay, so I think I got enough footage for a short little edit in 4K24, so enjoy.
Okay, so I just got done shooting some 4K at 24 FPS footage, and now I'm gonna move on to shoot some slow-mo. So right now I'm gonna be, my settings are gonna be 1080 at 120 FPS. I thought earlier when I first got this camera, it could shoot 240 frames per second, but I was kind of wrong and I guess it doesn't. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot some 1080 footage. Okay, well, I got some good slow motion test in 1080 at 120 FPS, and I really hope that looks good. The sun is setting, so I think it's gonna help it look good also. Anyways, I'm gonna roll this clip in 1080 at 120 frames per second, so here we go. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little edit. Anyways, um, I got a few accessories since um, I did the unboxing video. I got some batteries for my camera. I'll leave a link for all the things that I've used in the video and that I talked about in the description below. And if you purchase them, that gives me a little small commission because I am an affiliate of this links. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can do whatever up here with this icon. You can like click it if you want, but you don't have to. And you can watch my other videos right down there. And till then, have a good day and enjoy your new camera. No, I will enjoy my new camera, but if you get one too, enjoy it too.